Live Laugh Larceny discusses true petty crimes that may be disturbing to some. Or could be easy listening to all you psychopaths out there. All stories are based on actual events. Eh, but details may vary. Listener discretion is not advised. Welcome to Live, Laugh, Larceny, the show that soils reputations, garden beds, and pants. <laughs> this is Trevin. And I'm Amanda, and I am fully triggered by that intro, Trevin. I'm sorry to do that to you so soon. It's okay, it's okay. But Trevin, mm -hmm. do you have a dreadful dilemma this week? I do have a dreadful dilemma that actually has to do a bit with soiling. Oh, Lord. Okay. I just recently did a pet dilemma, mm -hmm. and I try to spread them out a little bit for the pet haters out there. Are there pet haters out there? I think there are. What? <laughs> Wait, is this something you've just created in your own mind, or have you been attacked online? I don't know. I feel like somebody once complained to quit talking about animals, or okay. your animals, but I could be wrong. Okay, okay, damn. <laughs> but I do have to bring up Mabel and the fact that she is the most inconvenient shitter really and i only want to bring that up because i want to know do any of my other dog owners have the same problem because i will let her out in the yard forever she'll run mm. the yard whatever gets it out of her system and then we go and take a really nice walk and every damn time she drops trow <laughs> and strangles a snickers right there oh my god on the grass of somebody who's hanging out in their lawn oh yeah it's like oh those people are home okay i'll stop and shit right in front of them yeah or it's oh somebody's trying to like back into their driveway nicely let's shit right in front of their house <laughs> right because i'm trying to ignore everybody yeah as i'm walking right so i Emily and I had this little bit where I just say everything I'm thinking in the moment mm. when this happens. Yeah. So I'm just like, Mabel, how dare you? Why you make me look so stupid? Why you shit in the grass in front of the people that live here? And I'm just like saying this to Mabel while she's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm doing it in a funny way. I'm not actually like screaming it at her. <laughs> right. It's like in a you know whisper scream sort of way. <laughs> At first, I did it just to humor myself, mm -hmm. and then it became a thing that I know it made Emily laugh. <laughs> and now I'm getting to the point where I'm getting more comfortable in the funniness of it that I think that the people who live at the houses might actually hear me sometimes. <laughs> Trevin, no! So I might look like a person who just... Talks mad shit to their dog <laughs> while they shit? <laughs> yeah. Shit in the yard, but somebody's not watching me watch my dog do it? Like, don't watch me watch someone poop. Trevin, okay, I am here to confirm your suspicions about dogs because as some of you might know, Trevin's dog Mabel is just a miniature version of my two dogs, Reptar and Yoshi. Mm -hmm. I think we've talked about this before, but it's probably been a minute for maybe some new listeners. Anywho, when I take them on a walk, okay, and it's been a minute because they have a dog door, they have a big ass yard that they just do whatever they want in. And this is hopefully will make you feel better because my dogs have that free reign 24 seven to go in the yard. Okay. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I would take them on a walk, same thing. They just wanted to shit right in someone else's yard, right in front of somebody. It's like a whole thing. Yeah. The walking shits. Yeah. They're just like, Ooh, that looks like a nice yard. And they just want to shit in it. Nothing you can do really. No, I just got to keep carrying my stupid little pink claw that picks it up and <laughs> carry it swinging you have a claw thing yeah it's a little scoop claw thing that you line it with a bag and then you pick it up and then you can tie it at the end and then you just squeeze the claw and drop it in the trash oh what the hell i need to get one of these i've been doing it old school girl just grabbing it with my bare hands i'm just kidding <laughs> just <laughs> kidding. It in your pocket i have a baggie but no claw Wow, Trevin. Well, that is dreadful. And that is a shame that only a dog walker will ever know. Yeah. Well, I also have a dreadful dilemma. However, it does end on a positive note. 
So don't be alarmed too badly. Okay, everyone? Mm -hmm. You are warned. This is actually an episode full of warnings from me. I actually decided this uh -huh. on my drive here. My dreadful dilemma, my segment, and my story all have to do with warning the public. I don't know what's going on with me, but everyone needs to know. Okay. Oh, so you're warning the public about something. You're not saying this is like a trigger warning. You're just saying. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. I thought you were saying like you're going super edgy today. No, no. It's just warning you about simple little life things that I think everyone needs to be warned about, but still in the petty realm. Okay. okay. Petty realm. I like that. Nothing too heavy. So my dreadful dilemma today is about, I don't think I, I actually ever brought it up like as a full thing on the show. Maybe I briefly talked to you about it, but I lost my debit card like a few weeks back. Did I ever tell you about that? Maybe in passing. Okay. There's a Dollar General like right by my house and it's the perfect place if the girls are like, we're out of popsicles or oh, I want an LOL doll or whatever the hell. Okay. And so I went there with Winnie one day and I got all this stuff, popsicles included. And Winnie, it was one of those days where she was just, nothing was calming her down. She mm -hmm. was just on a level. And so what I ended up doing, which some parents out there, I'm sure they've all done it too. But again, this is a warning because this is what happened to me. I opened up one of the popsicles and let Winnie have it in the store being like, okay, I'm going to buy these, obviously. Right. And it'll be fine. I go up to the cash register. I'm rummaging through my stuff, putting the stuff on the conveyor belt. I go to check out, and I had just had my debit card in my hand. And next thing I know, it is gone, gone, gone. I am looking everywhere. My purse, the cart. I even looked in the popsicle box that I had opened, and I was like, did it fall in? I had all these store employees looking. I gave them my phone number. And I was like, if you ever find it, please let me know. But this was after a long time of looking. Right. Luckily, I had some cash in my purse and I was able to pay for the popsicles. And I think like one other thing. And I was like, I'm so sorry. This is all the cash I have. I'm just going to get that and that. And I left and it was shameful and horrible. Okay. Fast forward, okay, I think it was like weeks went by, maybe even a month or two, and I get a random message on Facebook Messenger. So at this point, I've moved on. I figured I lost the debit card. I had canceled it that day, got a new one, blah, blah, blah. I get this message, and it's from a girl named Teresa from Dollar General. Ooh, shout out, Teresa. Shout out, Teresa. You are a real one. So Teresa finds me just by my name on my card. And she's like, hey, did you ever lose a debit card at Dollar General? And I said, yes. Where did you find that? I thought I was going insane. Mm -hmm. Like I had it at the cash register. And next thing I knew, it was just gone. And she was like, well, we were cleaning out our conveyor belt. And you must have sat it down on the conveyor belt and it sucked it right in. Whoa. So your memory was pretty good. Yes. Yes. I thought... You dingling, like you probably left it on a shelf or something dumb, even though I was like, no, I remember having it at the cash register. I was going crazy. I was gaslighting myself, okay? Oh, I get it. No, I'm totally with you on that. I mean, it was dreadful. It did stress me out. As we all know, it sucks to have to change your debit card. That's the dreadful part. It really does. So don't leave your cards on the conveyor belts, people. It's a real thing. They can just suck them right in, apparently. Damn. So, Trevin. Yes. We are going to be doing a game of trivia this week. Whoa, 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 Trevin. We do not have the rights to say that. Uh, let's have a fun time. We certainly are. And you are first. I am. And I've got a fun, heady crime trivia for everyone. Oh, perfect. It's a mixture of petty crime and celebrity. Oh! So my trivia question for you is... Nicolas Cage once was the victim of a home invasion where a naked man came into his home and did what? Oh my God. Is it A, ate a fudge sickle, <laughs> B, slept in his bathtub, or C, stole an MTV movie award? Ooh. <laughs> that was the weirdest sound maybe ever. That was like part human, part cow. 
I was just so excited. This has everything I love. This has the drama. This has scandal. This has celebrity. And I'm really afraid I'm going to get it wrong. This is how I'm feeling. It would be really cool if he stole the award. It would be the most logical, in my opinion, that he found someone sleeping in his bathtub. But for me, the one I love the most is I hope that he was eating a fudge sickle. So I'm going to go with, what was that? A, fudge sickle? Uh, fudge sickle was A. Yeah, I'm going to go with A. And you are correct. (gasps) (laughs) I didn't think that was going to be it at all. I just wanted it to be it. So coming from Reuters.com, they have an article called Nicolas Cage Awoken by Naked Man with Fudge Sickle. (laughs) So in one of his interviews, Cage said, It was two in the morning. I was living in Orange County at the time and was asleep with my wife. My two-year-old at the time was in another room. I opened my eyes, and there was a naked man wearing my leather jacket eating a fudge sickle in front of my bed. I know it sounds funny, but it was horrifying. Cage said the ordeal ended after he talked the man out of the house and police arrived. He did not press charges, as the man had mental problems. But Cage said afterwards he could no longer live in the house, so they moved. Oh my god, I know I'm giggling, but of course, if any person is in your home that shouldn't be there in the middle of the night Mm -hmm. let alone naked at the foot of your bed that is very fucking alarming okay i want to make that clear the fudge sickle part and the leather jacket however are a little bit comedic it's very funny details for sure yeah bizarre but gotta say nicholas cage handled it with class helped talk him out safely without you know acting wild about it and didn't press charges I mean, if anyone has a good voice of reason, it's Nicolas Cage. I mean, could you imagine if he could find and locate the stolen, what was it? The The Declaration (laughs) of Independence. I almost put that as one of the things that was stolen. I should have just said, (laughs) and D. (laughs) If he can do that and he can like talk us through the movies, just imagine being like talked down by Nicolas Cage. I'm here for it. I'd like him to just talk me to sleep. Okay, Trevin. Let's see if you can also get the correct answer here, okay? All right. So, in the spirit of warning everyone today... (laughs) Oh, yeah, we're back on the warning thing. (laughs) I'm going to talk to you all about unfaithful people, okay? Oh, I loved that movie as a kid. Unfaithful people? Just unfaithful. Oh, I don't know if I know that one. Diane Lane, the erotic thriller. Oh, I know what I'm watching tonight. Richard Gere. (laughs) My question for you is, what percent of online daters posing as single are already in a relationship? There was a study done on this, and so I'm curious if you can guess it correct, okay? Mm -hmm. Is it A, 51%, B, 23%, or C, 71%? I don't want to go with the lowest one, but I definitely don't think it's the highest one. So I'm going to go with A. And you are correct as well. Uh, You know what? I can't get away from you. Like I try to pick a different one from you and then we end up getting the same one. So I thought that was a great reason why I felt like that would also be the right answer. You can't get away from me. You are so correct, Trevin. Here I am. Okay. So to give you all a little bit more specific data here. This is taken from the Guardian website, and it was a dating advice column. It is true. 51% of online daters who pose as single are in a relationship. More specifically, 42% of those on Tinder already have a partner. 30% are married, and 12 are already in a relationship, which equals out to making 51% of them online daters who pose as single, blah, blah, blah. So in addition to pretending to be single, people will lie on their profiles to hide from their partners. They are either cheating or trying to determine if their partner is cheating. So there are some real issues with all of this. You dabbled with the online dating world. I really didn't have to do that, but Mm -hmm. 51% of these people are actually in relationships? 
Yeah, I totally believe a lot of that. What I always noticed was it seemed like people were on the fence on whether trying to leave one or stay. And so then you were kind of in to be like that dark horse option of like, no. do I go back or do I stay? And actually, I had it happen with a girl once who was, I think she was on the fence about going official with a guy but she was like i'm not quite there yet so then we started talking and then she was like now nah, go with the other guy and then completely just ghosted me after that so it's so a lot people of are treating it like it's better to find a new job if you already have a job but they're taking that to relationships certainly damn i hate that i hate that and on top of that you say 51 percent are in a relationship i bet about 30 percent are bots too so oh god so what percent <laughs> are we left with at the end of the day yeah so you've got a low percent and then if you're like <laughs> me you hate most people so then <laughs> what's the point hey it somehow worked for you though it did and i did find emily on a dating site yeah damn 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 well everyone out there just be warned and know that there are people that are lying out there on these apps. <laughs> I think you're probably more surprised by it than most of our listeners. I know. I'm like the mother goose that's like, gather around, ducklings, just so you know. And they're like, we know, bitch. We've been out in the pond. We know. <laughs> I'm going to give you a very basic moral story here. <laughs> oh, well, you know what else I'm going to tell you all about? The activities to do on a summer day. No, silly ads. And we are back from the main event, the ads. Yes, I hope you all enjoyed that because it's only going downhill from here. That's right. <laughs> so today I'm going to tell you a story from the news. Okay. But it's going to be more on a moral level than on a criminal level. Ooh, so a crime against humanity type of situation, maybe? Somewhat like that. Okay. You know, maybe we get to play the judge, jury, and executioner here. Ooh, I love that. So get your facts straight, and let's go. The criminal justice system's favorite motto is innocent until proven guilty. If it were a person, they'd have it tattooed on their lower back. It's a catchy saying, and it's so well-intentioned that no one would use it and not actually follow it, right? Well, I think you all know where I'm going with this one. I live in a nation founded on saying one thing while doing the other. Of course, it's not always innocent until proven guilty. We all have heard those awful stories about innocent people going to jail for 10 years, or truly terrible people maintaining important positions. Courtrooms have become places for wealthy people to measure their power in a public setting. It's not about the truth. It's innocent until proven wealthy. But what if I completely stepped over that political spicy meatball and focus more on the court of public opinion? That changes things a bit, doesn't it? Whether it be the latest alleged celebrity scandal, the mysterious reasons behind a boss's abrupt termination, or thoughts about the new date your sibling brought to family dinner, Total bitch. people will make big decisions about others without any real rationale. Can we even trust any shared public opinion in this day and age? Probably not. So what happens when a normal person with hopes and dreams gets caught up in the drama of a bad public outlook? There's no courtroom to sit in, no judge to force everyone to respect the ruling. You can try to change opinions, but your voice will never overpower a very vocal society. I have an opinion. Today I want to present to you all the story of a human not much different from you and I, who found his hopes and dreams soiled by the tumultuous words of public opinion. So check the facts and think for yourself because this story may be all you have to go off of when coming up with your own. Why must it be this way? How can the world be so cruel? I was a champion. I was a champion. Oh, hello there, audience. Sorry you just caught me writing the letter that will define my life. They say there comes a time in every man's life where at his lowest point, an audience will appear to hear his story. I believe it's just so there can be more first-person stories in the world, but who am I to complain? After what has happened to me, I'm just happy to have company again. I'm really glad you personified here in my apartment. This is the only place free of everyone else's opinions, where you can hear my story with an open mind. Once I tell you about the cold December night in 2023, you'll see that I'm a good character and deserving of a better public reputation. Before we go any further, you're probably wondering, who is this man in crisis and why am I in his apartment? And to that I would say, Hi, my name is Yan, nice to meet you. 
and you're probably here because I'm on the verge of a mental breakdown. You see, up until a couple weeks ago, I was known as Yan Shenlong, the Chinese chess champion, but the most prestigious title went away just as quickly as it came. Since the day I was born 48 years ago, my life revolved around Xian Shi, or Chinese chess. As a baby, I chewed on teething versions of the game pieces, and I enrolled in my first Chinese chess camp at the age of two. Mama swears I won my first endgame before I even spoke my first word. In middle school, I studied my chess books every single bus ride. And when my friends were out playing seven minutes in heaven with the cheerleaders, I was in the city parks playing chess against the old people. I absorbed all of their knowledge as I left each one of them defeated on the game board. By the time I was 21, I had forgotten how to tie my shoes due to all the tactics and strategies I'd learned. Yan the man, all the people in my town called me. No one stood a chance when I was in the battle position, except people on the national circuit. As I grew in confidence, I would jump into national circuit qualifiers, where the best of the best compete. You're going down! At first, I got my ass kicked. I was impatient, young, and inexperienced. People on the national circuits had techniques I had never seen before, and their discipline radiated off of them like a bad chemical peel. I didn't know any better. Each year I stepped into the circuit, only to be cut down by more skilled challengers. But the persistence paid off. Decades of down years and embarrassing public defeats gave me the strength to change my fate. Chariot to general, advisor to soldier, my strategy became more refined and hard to predict. Checkmate, bitch. I began picking up wins here and there until I eventually started qualifying for circuits. The circuits were a new beast in and of themselves, but I adapted. More defeats and learning experiences followed until that fateful December night a mere few weeks ago when I would finally get my chance to be a champion. It was the December 17th Chinese Chess Association's annual championship, a formidable who's who of board game army generals. I had competed many times in the past, playing my role as fodder for previous champions, but this was my year to win it all. I had a storied rise up through the 2023 circuits and I was considered a top contender for the prize. My limousine dropped me off at the red carpet, where chess fanatics wailed and took pictures of me. I waved to the general crowd, stopping to give a subtle wink to the Yan clan, my personal fan base of groupies. Oh my god, he looked at me! Even though I was wearing the association's official competition outfit of a red polo and khaki pants, there was something about the way it fit me that drove the ladies wild. Maybe it was the squats I had been doing, or maybe they had a thing for Jake from State Farm. Either way, my sex appeal was giving my skills a boost that night. The bright hotel spotlights left a glare on the wood finish of the chess pieces, making it impossible to forget my surroundings when looking at the board. Each time I would lift a game piece, murmurs from the crowd would begin, judging the moves they anticipate I would make. Hearing the crowd reflect my own inner self-talk made a game of wits much harder to compete in, but I knew that a boob flash from the Yan clan was just a win away. Checkmate after checkmate, win after win, I sent chess competitors packing. The spectators roared with approval as they witnessed my transcendence from a mortal to a god. We love you, everyone would yell over the sounds of another fallen foe's cries. <laughs> after defeating over a dozen players, I had finally made it to the place I'd always wanted to be, the championship table. I, in the crowd, was exhausted. Winning and cheering for hours takes it out of a person. But we all knew that we would need to channel all the focus we had for my last opponent, John the Chariot Eater Poe. The Chariot Eater was a force to be reckoned with. He had no friends, no family, and his fan base was just a bunch of people who liked to watch the world burn. There isn't even an intriguing bit of context I can give you that humanizes this guy. He's not even the main character in his own life story. John Poe is 100% heel. As I sat down at the championship table, I looked across to my burly villain. He salivated, slowly cracking his knuckles and breathing heavily. The match seemed like a blur. Most of my moves were just me moving my pieces around, running in fear from what he may do. I moved my elephants and horses away from even his weakest pieces, as if the power dynamics were different when handled by his dark energy. My many unorthodox moves piled up. I was panicking. The championship table was so prestigious, and I was happy to be there, but I didn't want it to end. In my mind, I was fighting a battle of good versus evil. The pressure was too much. I couldn't lose this match. And as luck would have it, I didn't. Somehow, around my moves of boneheaded flailing, 
I had taken the chariot eater's king. Checkmate? I meekly said, as everyone in the stands poured onto the auditorium floor. I was a champion. Everyone loved me. Bottles were popped and champagne suds filled the skies. The association handed me a little yellow trophy with certificate, and I even got to take a picture next to the Chinese Chess Association's president, Mr. R.J. Rump. Jeez. I was on top of the world and everyone knew my name. It wasn't just the residents of my small town calling me Yan the Man. It was the entire nation of China. After the award ceremony, some very exciting chess friends and I went back to my hotel room to celebrate my crowning achievement. We ate greasy food, splurged on extra desserts, and drank a responsible amount of beers. Everyone left without a racket, and my dreams had finally come true. I was known as the Chinese chess champion for an entire week before the association stripped it away from me on a Christmas of all times. They released a statement to the press saying I violated public order and good morals, stripping me of my title, my $14,000 prize money, and saying I acted in very bad character. It was adding insult to injury on an ungodly level. Did I fly too close to the sun? Was the most coveted title of champion something that was never meant for me? Everyone still knew my name, but instead of adding the word champion to my name, they called me a disgrace. All anyone wanted to talk about was the fall from grace I endured, and not the years of work I put into my craft. And that's why I'm glad you manifested here, my audience. Outside of my front door is a cruel world of people just waiting to bring me down. But you don't know any better. I'm free to be the me that I used to be. Thanks to this very specific exchange, you know my side of the story outside of the pesky public opinion that has me painted as a villain. I'm a human being, a champion, and this letter that I finished constructing right before you popped up will turn it all around. Once the Chinese Chess Association hears my side of the story just as you did, they'll have no choice but to restore my title, my good name, and of course my prize money. I mean, you can easily see that I've been wrongfully accused. I'm an innocent man, and redemption will be mine. It's probably one of those bullies from the media or a citizen thinking they're some kind of hero. You stay here while I go check things out. I don't want any of the negative public opinion getting on you. You think this is funny? You'll be sorry once everyone reads my letter! Better Homes and Bathtubs magazine. Real original. It seems that no matter how much I try to hide from the public scrutiny, it always finds a way, even in my safest place. I'm not sure how the relationship between a narrator and their crisis audience ends. I mean, it'd be pretty silly if you leave the confines of my story only to find out that I've been keeping something from you. That wouldn't leave a very trusting opinion of me now, would it? It's probably best you hear it from me anyway. That way you can see it wasn't that bad, and I still deserve to be a champion. Remember how I told you that my friends came to my hotel room, where we drank a responsible amount of beer and they left without a racket? Well, I may have left one final part out. After the bright lights, the thunderous crowds, and my hotel room celebration, I was feeling worn out. It was a long day and my stomach was full of finger foods from the tournament and celebration foods after the win. My friends were ready to turn up, offering to trade in a beer for some 151 rum. Let's get but I declined. I responsibly directed my friends to the front door and offered them to use my room number at the hotel bar. They told me how proud of me they were I'm so proud of you. before embracing me as the champion I was and then heading off to do hood rat shit to celebrate. Yeah! Once my room was quiet, I stripped down to my tidy whities and crawled into bed. My ears pulsated with my heartbeat, still ringing from the sounds of the crowd. The room was slightly spinning, not in an out of control way, but my body could tell it was no longer in motion after such a hectic day. I tossed and turned, feeling the sweats come on as my belly gurgled. I traced the sounds and pain of my gut lower and lower as I was doing a body scan of my lower intestine. The internal growling went on until it stopped at my colon. This was an emergency like none other. I didn't keep my cool on the big stage just to shit the bed in private. To avoid any unwanted explosions, I clenched every muscle in my body and began a slow crawl to the bathroom. My cold, damp skin slid across the tile as my arms struggled to grab anything to pull me forward. I reached the doorway before my body gave me my final sign of life. A drop in my gut shifted as if a turd was knocking on the door of my booty cavity. There was no waiting. I only had enough time and energy to do a few things. Any more waiting could result in a massive blowout and a permanent staining of the white mantis that clothed me. Sinking my teeth into my bottom lip, I stood up and ripped off my underpants. The clock was ticking, and the uncoordinated maneuver I just pulled to expose my buttocks shook something loose. 
In what felt like slow motion, I began to run for the toilet, leaning forward to lift the lid. My thumb and index finger pinched the oddly shaped hotel toilet lid, slightly lifting before losing their grip entirely. The sound of failure echoed throughout the bathroom as my progressing body had to make a choice. The toilet was no longer an option. If I spent even a millisecond trying to lift the lid again, I would have surely pooped on the floor. Like an action hero running from an explosion, I took all the forward momentum I had built up and dove into the bathtub. Except, unlike the action scene I just described, the deadly eruption was inside the tub. Doing my best impression of the spider crawl exercise from gym class, I lifted my body out of the tub, using my hands and feet while my anus remained pointed downward. Tears, sweat, and feces expelled from my body, filling the decorative bathtub in my luxury suite. By the time it was over, I was empty, embarrassed, and crying on the bathroom floor. I had performed the extremely easy task of clogging up a bathtub, but with a substance that I felt too much shame drawing attention to. Of course they didn't have a plunger available, and I wasn't going to scoop my mess to the toilet. I opted to run a little water and leave a nice tip for whoever cleaned the room. I just wanted all this to end so I could go on with my championship tour. My family hadn't even congratulated me yet. I'm a champion. People are supposed to look at me and see the gold of a winner, not the brown of a shitter. I had hoped the tip would be enough to keep my stinky surprise just between me and the hotel staff, but I was wrong. On December 17th of 2023, 48-year-old Yan Shenlong won the National Chinese Chess Championship before having his championship title stripped away for defecating in a hotel bathtub. As word of the bathtub butt dumpling spread, so did rumors of Yan's legitimacy as champion, with Chinese social media outlets spreading rumors of cheating via electronic anal massaging device. According to Business Insider, one hotel employee alleged finding an electronic anal massager in the feces while Yan denied such accusations stating that he had been playing high-level chess for 40 years and stating that this was just a case of diarrhea after drinking. However, on December 25th, one week after the dumping occurred, the Chinese Xianqi Association had a formal announcement. Based on our most understanding of the situation, it is currently impossible to prove that Yan engaged in cheating via anal beads, as speculated on social media. Yan consumed alcohol with others in the room on the night of the 17th, and then he defecated in the bathtub of the room he was staying in on the 18th in an act that damaged hotel property, violated public order and good morals, and had a negative impact on the competition and the event of shang -Chi, and was of extremely bad character. The message also came with a punishment, stripping Yan of his championship title, his winnings of 100,000 yuan, approximately 14,000 US dollar, and disqualifying him from Chinese chess competitions for one full year. In January 2024, Yan filed a lawsuit against the Chinese Jianqi Association, alleging mental distress. He demanded that the association apologize to him, restore his reputation in the media, and pay him 100,000 yuan in damages. Yan Shenlong also reiterated that he drank a moderate amount of beer to celebrate his win with other players, some food had caused stomach problems, and he couldn't make it to the toilet in time. No further information has been released since the creation of the lawsuit. So what do you think? Does this man deserve to lose his title just because he had one shitty night? Unfortunately, I did make up the part about him leaving a big tip for the cleaning staff. There was no mention of anything left behind besides the doo-doo in the tub. Who knows, maybe that is why someone chose to come forward and raise a stink about it in the first place. If I had to clean a bathtub of someone else's butt slop, I'd probably start rumors about them too. I hope this story opened your eyes a bit more to the power and chaotic nature of the court of public opinion. Just like the court system siding with power and money, our society's public outlook on a living being can be just as subjective. Hell, even my opinion hinges heavily on whether or not I think the guy tipped well for his chocolate surprise. People's opinions are just as complicated and ever-changing as the people we are trying to judge. Everyone has layers, making no commonly shared opinion 100% accurate. Joining the crowd may feel safe, but if the vocal majority you join unjustly punishes an innocent person, there is no escaping how dirty that will make you feel. I hope that day doesn't come for you all. But if it does, maybe take a shower. You never know which chess champions used that tub before you. Nasty, nasty, nasty. I am glad that you clarified the nice tip was actually made up 
the worry of clogging up a friend's bathroom at a party. Like, I mm-hmm. know it's awful, but, oh, God, I feel like he should have at least tipped or maybe just told one random cleaning person in the hall and been, like, apologetic in some way, right? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I know it's embarrassing, but... Yeah, if it were me and I was doing that heinous, anus act, <laughs> I would have left so much money... But I don't know if he did. And that does really, for me personally, makes a big difference on my opinion. Yeah. I get it. I I understand having a big thing happen and then just like kind of freaking out because you don't want to lose it. Yes. But if you're going to inconvenience somebody, you got to find a way to say sorry or find a way to make it somewhat worth their while. You know, just for good vibes sake. Yes. If nothing else. Yes. That's kind of unsanitary, obviously, for somebody else to have to clean. Mm Mm-hmm. But I also get that bodily functions happen. It's a big fear of mine. And now adding to the fear will be to defecate in a tub on accident. But (laughs) I can also see he's a public figure. You can't just be leaving gigantic dumps and not doing a damn thing about it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm torn. There was a move that my friends always talked about called the waffle stomp. Oh. And that's just if you poop in the bathtub, you just stomp it down the drain It would waffle your poop. Oh, my God. So this is a tactic for anyone who accidentally finds themselves in a bathtub full of doo-doo. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if this guy tried it. He maybe didn't want to get his foot yucky. Well, I'm sorry. It would have been worth the risk. (laughs) (laughs) I will say this. Even though I'm on the fence with his actions and the response, I actually don't think that his winning should have been taken back because of that what do you think exactly that's what i thought too the whole public opinion thing is it seemed like a lot of people thought he should lose the championship for it for my angle of the story i stuck with the hardcore facts of he lost his championship and they stated it's because of pooping the tub yeah even though the whole cheating with the anus massager yeah that's another level which that could not be proven right that could not be proven and they had only said it in one article that one person when interviewed said they saw it in the doo-doo you'd think that would have came up as evidence Mm -hmm. and they would say oh we have it but there was another one i even considered doing a story on where somebody did get busted cheating at chess because of that Mm. where they have those sex toys where like you could wear the device and then your partner could be at work and be like i'm gonna give her a little tingle at three so people could watch the chess match and like calculate what you could do and send you a little buzz buzz in your butt then you'd be like, oh, a two buzzes means go left. Okay. Oh, okay. So this is something that actually was done. It's something that has happened before. Okay. Well, I did not even know that was a thing. I thought that was just pulled out of somebody's butt. (laughs) No pun intended. Just joking. There was definitely pun intended. But I didn't know that was a thing that does factor into the decision, I'm sure. They're like, yeah, if one person found that, then it could have been used to cheat. Yeah, but all they said was one person said it was in there, but nobody ever said that it came out where people could see it. It has happened before. I thought about doing a story on it once, but then... This poopy story seemed more fun. And and I like the angle of the court of public opinion, you know? Yeah. I know a lot of times when people want to talk about that, they want to talk about people who are like very much bad people. Yeah. And some people who are bad people want to get mad because they're getting caught for it. Mm -hmm. But there are some people that kind of get a bad reputation based off of just something that people didn't like. Exactly. I can't think of a good one that's not extremely problematic off the top of my head. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you get it. I mean, I, I said in the story... You have a sibling bring a date over to a thing and then mom can say, ah, she's not good enough for my boy. And that Mm -hmm. can just set off a little bit of a reaction that kind of makes everybody not like that person. Totally. It just sucks that people can kind of go with the flow like that and we can kind of form good person, bad person opinions on people on something so silly like that. Like you said, too, so many people, so many public figures have done way worse, Mm -hmm. (laughs) way worse But then again, this didn't take place here, so maybe that's a little different as well. Maybe if something like this were to happen in the small town I grew up in, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and they had like a bingo championship or something, and they paid, (laughs) let's say, $500 to the winner, if they went and shit in one of the town's hotel rooms 
or you know kind of ruin their name in the public eye there yeah. i could see them being like we're not calling them the champion anymore you know because it's just a small town i guess i don't know i guess it just depends on the community and i don't know how big it is in my story i made it sound huge but if the community is not that big and well ran they might just kind of fold to the public pressure mm-hmm. easier easier than like a let's say the nfl how they can stand tall with anything they say yeah 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 that's true it's sad because it just is proof that sometimes the most ridiculous act can really rub people the wrong way, like more yeah. than actual crimes. <laughs> yeah, I will say that it being Chinese as opposed to being here, I do think that they probably have a bit more of a sense of decency and honor mm. than us Americans do. Yeah. We would just make a meme of it and then we probably wouldn't strip the person of their thing, I wouldn't think. Maybe that's why I feel that way. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Just because that's where we're raised and I don't know. But it seems very serious for such an accidental... And I say this too. It was nasty, but it was probably an accident. Come on. Nobody means to do that, right? I've never heard of that as a prank. <laughs> Do you watch someone go shit in his bathtub? Right. In a hotel, nonetheless. Not even a friend. Come on. Well, that was insane. And fun that you told it as if you were the guy. I also have a story this week. And you guys, I'm going personal this week. I have a personal petty crime story. Oh, wow. This is wild, Trevin. As one of my closest friends, this is actually something that happened to me kind of recently. And it's something that I wanted to tell you about. But I'm so glad I didn't. Because it's a story that has gone on now for a little while in my life. And I'm so glad I was able to keep it from you to write it down in story form. You mugged somebody and kept it a secret from me? (laughs) No, no, no. I am actually the victim of this tale. (laughs) I'm already hurt that you're keeping secrets, but... I know. I hate to do it to you, but it had to be done, okay? Well, I'll enjoy the reveal. So, here we go. I would consider myself a kind human being. I tip those working in the service industry. I pass out compliments to strangers on the street. And I turn on the ceiling fan, plus Febreze the air, after taking a dump in my family's main restroom. The needs of others are of genuine importance to me, and I do my best to be considerate. Yet for most kind souls, there are petty people lurking around, just waiting to take advantage. Unfortunately for me, I am no different than all the other nice, naive Nancys. But fortunately for the show, It makes for one hell of a story. I encourage you all to prepare your hearts and your mind before listening to this tragic tale, for this may become my villain origin story. It was a lovely brisk morning on March 19th, 2024. The sun was glowing in the early sky as I drove down the street with my two kids in the back seat. I first dropped off my oldest daughter at kindergarten and then dropped off my youngest daughter with my dad. Later. It was a busy day ahead, full of errands and work, starting with the grocery store. I pulled up to the brand new Price Chopper by my house, one of Kansas City's well-known stores for somewhat pricey food items. As I browsed the store aisles, I thought of my family. I needed to get something spicy for my husband Jordan and some of my girl's favorite treats. I slowly filled up my metal shopping cart, making sure not to forget any needed produce, meats, or toiletries. Eventually, I had made my way to the end of the large store and got in line to check out. After all my items were scanned, I complimented the cashier. You can scan me any day. Then I wheeled my cart out into the half-full parking lot. After I loaded all my groceries into the trunk of my vehicle, I noticed someone approaching me cautiously. I saw the person's pants first because they were wearing bright red pajama pants that looked like they had been worn for years. Glancing up at the pajamaed stranger, I saw they were wearing a denim jacket in the cool weather. The person appeared to be a woman who was in clear distress from her facial expressions. Stepping close to me, I could see her face more clearly. 
She had rounded, almost baby-looking cheeks. Her brunette hair was pulled back into a ponytail, and she had a few pesky dark hairs sprouting from her chin. She looked at me with slightly sunken eyes and said, Hello, miss. I'm so sorry for asking, but it's my time of the month and I was wondering if you had any ladies' products or cash to get some? I don't know where I am, and my GPS is saying I still have a few more hours to get there. I was immediately disarmed by the fact that this woman was clearly having a bad day, with period pains on top of it all. I checked in my purse for any tampons, but only found a couple of $1 bills and chapstick. I don't have any tampons, and all I have are these $2, I said, feeling useless to this woman's emergency. Regardless, I handed her the one, saying, I wish there was more I could do to help. As I started to turn toward my vehicle, the woman spoke up again. Actually, is there any way you would be able to help get me some gas? I don't have enough to get where I'm going, and I don't know this area very well. The woman looked like she was near tears. On one hand, I felt for her situation. We all have bad days where we wish someone would just give us a break. But on the other hand... I knew that if things went wrong somehow, I would end up telling the story on my True Petty Crime podcast. I decided to ask a follow-up question to test the validity of her story. Oh no, where are you headed? I asked curiously. Up to Stockton Lake to stay with my family. I paused for a moment, realizing that although I didn't have much money to my own name, I still had enough to fill a trunk full of groceries. Besides, What kind of scammer asked for tampons or gas? Seeing me thinking, the woman suggested a possible plan. I can pull my van around to the gas station right there, if you're able to help me. She said, pointing towards a gas station attached to the grocery store parking lot. Okay. I agreed with a slight smile. I'll meet you over there. As I drove toward the gas station... A part of me was suggesting that I just drive home and pretend I never had the interaction with a stranger in PJs. But my inner guilt took back the reins, leading me straight to the pumps. A rickety and rusted old minivan petered towards the neighboring pump, eventually letting out a mechanical sigh as the engine was turned off. The rear window of the van was missing and replaced with tape. This wasn't an ordinary soccer mom van. This was a mess. The familiar woman exited the driver's side door of the van and met me at the pump. I apologize. This old van has nothing to look at. It was inherited from my grandfather, the woman clarified. Thank you so much for helping me. I asked the manager here at the gas station for help earlier, but she turned me away. I truly felt for the woman, imagining her asking multiple people for help before running into me. It's no problem, I reassured her. We all have tough times, and I would only hope that someone else would do the same for me. With groceries still in the trunk, and feeling a bit awkward, we said our goodbyes as the woman finished filling up her tank. I made sure I had collected my card from the gas pump and got back into my vehicle. Starting up my engine, I experienced conflicting emotions. Had I truly helped someone in need? Or was this somehow a big scam I wasn't aware of? Confused, I called my husband Jordan to get his take on it all. After explaining the whole interaction, I waited for his response. Girl, he said, you got played. I was a bit shocked at his certainty of the situation and a bit defensive back stating, it's not like she took all my money. I just filled up her tank. But Jordan's opinion stood firm as we ended the call. I, on the other hand, chose to picture the woman reuniting with her family at the lake. Maybe she could finally change out of her tattered PJ pants and find peace and happiness. Thank you, Amanda. Fifteen days had passed, making it April 3rd, 2024. I had all but forgotten about my exchange with the stranger at the store, and life continued on. My family had devoured all the food out of the pantry and refrigerator, even making a dent in our frozen items. It was time for another grocery store visit. This day, I took my two-year-old daughter with me to Price Chopper after dropping off my oldest at school. Peace out, kiddo! My little one giggled along as she rode in the grocery cart, laughing at store balloons and toilet paper displays. 
In between laughs, we filled the cart with items and checked out without any major meltdowns. Wheeling out to the parking lot, I found my vehicle and immediately put my daughter in her car seat. After she was secured with a toy, I shut her car door and pushed my cart towards the trunk. Just as I opened my trunk door, I saw a pair of feet shuffling towards me. Above those feet were red, tattered pajama bottoms. Excuse me, miss? The same woman from weeks earlier reintroduced herself to me. She appeared to look stressed and upset as she began to tell an eerily similar sob story involving cramps and chaos. Her voice was muffled in my mind as I thought to myself, No fucking way. I've helped you before, I stated out loud, interrupting the woman and her lies. She appeared caught off guard by my comment and didn't seem to recognize me like I did her. I, I haven't been here very long. There's no way you've helped me. She tried to rationalize with me. I filled up your van with gas, I said bluntly, anger starting to build up inside me. How dare this woman try to convince me I'd never seen her or helped her before. The woman had apparently picked up on my rising irritation and began walking away from me quickly. I finished loading up my groceries and got back into my vehicle. Just as I buckled my seat, I saw the drifter a couple rows ahead of me. Only this time, she was approaching a much older woman that was putting her grocery cart away. Whether or not the old woman ignored the pajamaed stranger or simply didn't hear her, the woman passed right by her. Standing there rejected, the woman in the red PJ pants and I made eye contact through my windshield. I glared at her as if to say, You better leave that innocent old woman alone. The nonverbal message seemed to go through as she finally broke eye contact with me and disappeared into the rows of cars. Exactly one week had passed, making it April 10th, 2024. The weather had warmed up and my kitchen shelves grew bare over the past seven days. My family was starting to turn hangry, so I figured it was time for another grocery run. However, to save some money, I decided to shop at our close-by Aldi store this time. It was another morning routine of dropping my oldest off at school, Make good choices. and then starting my errands with my youngest daughter while we were already out. Arriving at the smaller store, I wrangled with my reusable grocery bags and collected a quarter in order to use the store's shopping cart. Then I grabbed my kiddo and entered the store. Inside, we gathered fruits, veggies, and snacks as my toddler waved at every other shopper. Well, hello there, little lady. We checked out and packed up our grocery bags, then made our way back out to the parking lot. Again, I placed my daughter inside her car seat before loading up the back of my trunk. I had just finished packing up my items into the back of my vehicle when I noticed someone shuffling towards me. Only this time, above the feet weren't tattered red PJ pants, but black basketball shorts. And instead of a thick denim jacket, this individual wore a dark hoodie. Regardless, when my eye line made its way up to the person's head, I recognized the face instantly. Standing in front of me was the formerly pajamaed woman, wearing a new outfit, yet sporting the same distraught face. Unable to contain my body language or facial expressions, I placed my hands on my hips and stared at the woman. I stood there, impatiently waiting for the latest explanation from the all-too-familiar fraudster. It was unclear if the woman recognized me or was caught off guard by my not-so-friendly appearance, but either way, her rehearsed story had changed into a bizarre and on-the-spot question. Um, uh, do you know if they've cleaned the bathroom in there? The petty panhandler asked me, stuttering clumsily all over her own words and pointing to the Aldi store. The bathroom? <laughs> I asked with a slight chuckle. I was caught off guard by the random question and was mildly entertained by her improvisation. Yes? The woman questioned me back as if I was the one asking her strange questions. Not only did Aldi not have a public restroom that I was aware of, but I still had my child in groceries waiting for me in my vehicle. Look... I said, my patience growing thin. This is the third interaction we've had recently, and it's getting awkward for me, okay? Again, the woman stammered on her words, 
giving me a similar defensive explanation from the last run-ins. I, I haven't been around here long. The woman lied as she began backing away from me. She then quickly turned around and Power walked into a nearby auto repair shop's parking lot. After the multiple encounters with the formerly pajamaed woman and local grocery store parking lots, I did some digging online. My husband promised not to say I told you so and assisted in my investigation. Together, we discovered multiple Reddit thread posts describing eerily similar run-ins with grocery store parking lot bandits. Some comments even mentioned the red pajamas, denim jacket, or the request for tampons before asking for cash, groceries, or gas. Another Reddit user also claimed that the notorious woman was a part of a crew that divided up to different parts of the city, taking as much as they could get. Yet, there is no way for me to substantiate those claims. What I can say is that this experience has changed me. Where there was once an open, giving, and generous soul, now lies a cold black heart, only pumping to the rhythm of despair. It brings me great sadness knowing that the next time a stranger approaches me in need of help, I can't say whether or not I will believe them. So be kind, sure, but also make sure to stay honest because you never know when your deception can lead to another's villain era. That is such a funny interaction. It sounds like a bit that would be in like a family comedy. It would be like a Christmas movie where you have like family in town and you're getting ready for them. And every time you run to the grocery store, you see the same fraudster. Yeah. Tell me, Trevin, because I've gone back and forth. Obviously, I'm way too personally involved in this matter. Mm -hmm. And being face to face with her is different than just describing it where you guys already kind of know that she's not genuine mm -hmm. but do i at all feel bad for this person or not it's hard to because obviously you know they're still doing their thing and you don't really know i i don't know it's it's tricky it's tricky because clearly she is not in the best situation she's you know wearing the same pjs all over the damn city and has this like really run down van mm -hmm. that she might be living in for all i know and that would be really sad and i do feel for her but also, you keep lying. And I don't know if I just have a gullible looking face or if she is just out there this often in the same exact places and just at the same time. Yeah, it's really tricky because you hear the stories about those people who, at least that they're very popular around here, where people say, oh, I saw a person asking for change at the stoplight and then they went and jumped in a Mercedes and left. Or, you know, yeah. I don't fully believe every single one of those that I hear because those are horror stories that are told a lot in the Midwest because mm -hmm. that's what Midwestern people are afraid of is losing their money to other people that scam them. Yeah. But it's tricky, but it's also that you have like that personal side of it where it's just like, couldn't you have at least remembered me? Like. <laughs> At least she could have been like, oh, I won't try it with you because this was a kind person. Or at least say like, oh, hello again and made a better sequel to her story. Dude, I know. Did she remember me? Did she not? I mean, I don't know. I feel like if you're going to be doing the same exact bit mm -hmm. in the same exact area, you have to remember who you've done the bit to already. Yeah, I was really hoping that the third time she'd just been like, oh, shit. I don't even know what to say here, buddy. Like, you got me. And there's really no additional explanation because I literally, to the best of my abilities, I wrote it out exactly how I remembered each interaction being. Mm -hmm. So she really did just ask me this random question about, did they clean the bathroom in there and pointed at Aldi? And I was just like, what the fuck? You did a good job of handling the repetition of it because sometimes telling a story where the same thing keeps happening is very difficult. Yes. But it really is the bit because if, if you build the suspense of the story enough, you really gave me the same sense of like, here we go again and I'm annoyed at this point, yeah. like, which is good. Like I said, I was so torn the whole time. Are some people probably going to comment and be like, you dumb dumb, like you shouldn't have given her money sure okay i'm sure people will be like i would have never done that that's fine and dandy and clearly i was getting lied to about exactly where she was going 
But ultimately, I don't want to be just a cold villain that thinks that everyone who asks for something is lying, you know? Yeah, you don't want to be that closed off. And really, did you say how much you put in? I mean, I filled up her van. It was $50. Ooh, hell. Well, yeah. either way, it's not like they're going to siphon off that gas and resell it or something. I mean, you yeah. pretty much just help them be able to get places. So Yeah, I know. To get to a different store to then ask me for more money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would have been really nice if you could have somehow got on a list that was like, look, I already gave you money once. <laughs> It's the rules. You can't ask me again. I paid my dues. I know. So like I said, I found some Reddit threads. I think it was like awkward encounters at Price Chopper. Something was like the thing of the Reddit. Like that Uh was what it was called. It was something like that. But yeah, I am genuinely curious if anyone listening has either had a run-in with the same person or just a similar experience to that. Yeah, it is kind of funny. I mean, I'm sure statistically speaking, it's probably not great that you would have ran into each other three times. Twice possible, especially around the same times if you're on the same schedules, but it's just so funny and unlucky that it would be three times. Three knows, different times. It could be a four if we don't That's even know. That's what I'm saying. This third time, guys, was very recent to when we are recording, so... This might be something I have to keep you posted on, just to give you little updates here and there. Maybe it'll be like a dilemma sequel or something. Yeah, but connections, there were not charges on anyone. Yeah, there was no arrests. Both deal a lot with opinions. Yes, untrustworthy people. We both talked about that a lot, Mm -hmm. about like you don't know who you can really trust. Yes. That was like kind of like the build up to your story. I don't know. Is there anything else I'm not thinking of? I mean, we both made poop jokes. Yeah, we both made poop jokes. We also both told first-person stories. That's true. Mine wasn't personal, but I still made a first-person choice. Yep. Personal, opinions, trust. Yeah. I like the trust thing. What was that rhyme in that Justin Bieber song? Us. Trust. Other things I can't spell without you. You know what I mean? (laughs) Oh, my God. Quoting JB on the pod. Love it. Seriously, like trust goes a long way in every area of life. I am really, really finding that out as I get older. <laughs> oh, that is true for sure. Uh, well, no matter where you are, or what you're doing this week, I hope you are all just having the best time. And remember, no matter the crime, big or small, in the end, we're all doomed. Doomed to poop the tub. <laughs> Bye. See ya. Make sure you keep those debit cards off the conveyor belts and keep listening to our show. If you use social media to get other public opinions from things, why don't you give us a follow on there too? You can find us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, or Threads. Live, laugh, larceny. And have you ever been scammed in a grocery store parking lot? If so, send us your petty crime stories. Live, laugh, larceny at gmail.com. And make us the champions of online reviews. Give us five stars wherever you review podcasts, Apple, Spotify, or Good Pods. Lovely. Crisp as a daisy. (laughs) Did you say that once before? I don't think so. Is crisp as a daisy a real saying? I'm Googling it right now. I mean, it might be. I just don't know it. Let's see. (gasps) Is this not an actual phrase? (laughs) I was going to say that doesn't sound real to me, but if it's a real saying, I'll take it. (gasps) What? I thought that that was a... Is that just some weird thing that I say? Hey, trendsetter. Crisp as a daisy. I thought that was just something that everyone said. Wow. My mind is blown. I'm sorry to do that to you right before we start. Okay, it's fine. I'll collect myself. No problem, Trevin. My whole world has just changed.